time for the Live Life Loved podcast with internationally renowned author and speaker, Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Her message of good news, practical hope, and assured victory is a thirst-quenching relief in today's culture. You do not have to live your life in fear. You can truly and confidently live life loved. And now I give you Dr. Nicole Berryhill, our host of the Live Life Loved podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the Live Life Loved podcast. If you're new to the show, I'm Nicole Berryhill, and I teach that living life loved changes everything. Imagine a genuine, true paradigm shift that will deeply impact every aspect of your life for the better on autopilot. Your business, personal, and community relationships can feed your soul and boost your prosperity on every level when you learn how to live life loved. You'll find tons of information and resources for free on my website at NicoleBerryHill.com. Be sure to hit the Join the Tribe button and fill out that form. You'll be in the club. We invite you to also participate in the results-oriented coaching intensives, workshops, and courses we have to offer, if you so choose, to dive in deeper and make this a real part of your life. Okay, so this week we're continuing our discussion on how to love, and so far we've covered what is love, freedom and forgiveness, the importance of self-care, and clear and honest communication. So now we jump into a deeper level of how to love and a relationship skill that has been marginalized, minimized, and maybe even in many cases just straight up lost over the last few decades. Because edification is a word we don't really hear anymore in our daily conversations, we're going to jump straight into the word of the week, which is oikodomio, O-I-K-O-D-O-M-E-O. Edification is the translation we use in the New Testament for the Greek word oikodomio and the root word oikodomi, uh, which means the act of building or building up. While used often in a figurative sense, as in being encouraging, it's most deeply understood in the context of literal construction. The deeper meaning here being that this is referring to much more than an a girl or an attaboy or a high five. Oikodomio means the process of stacking brick on brick, bonded by mortar and actual labor. When we hear the words edify or edification, We should understand that not to mean a passing high five, but a lifelong process of constructing a magnificent spirit within one another, one daily opportunity at a time. Using the contextual understanding of oikodomio, we see pretty clearly that the intent of this life is to have a lifelong impact on one another. One cannot truly edify in passing. Uh, that circumstance would be best described as encouragement, which the word for that in Greek is parakaleo, P-A-R-A-K-A-L-E-O, meaning to come alongside, to exhort, to beseech, to console, all of which are fluid or passing in nature and meaning. Like the whole team rallies around you just before the big kickoff to encourage you. That's beautiful, but it's not orchidomio. Oikodomio communicates to us fairly clearly that edification is a process over time. In other words, it's an active commitment or includes an active commitment to another person's spiritual strength, growth, and well-being. The man who labors to please his neighbor for his good to edification has the mind that was in Christ. It's a sinner trying to help another sinner. Even a feeble but kind and tender man will affect more than a genius who is rough and artificial, said Sir Richard Cecil. Vance Havner, best known for his quote, The church is a hospital for sinners and not a museum for saints, wrote, There is a great need for the New Testament prophet who seeks to edification, exhortation, and comfort a strengthening, stirring, and soothing ministry. Personally, I've seen way too much to believe in coincidences, and I know for a fact that we're in one another's lives for a reason. So whether we're talking about professional relationships, friendships, family relationships, or even romantic relationships, 
Not only is mutual edification something we should invest in the people in our lives, but we should also require it from the people in our lives. We were made to build up one another's spirits over time. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not talking about ego boosting or shallow compliments, as my grandmother would have probably said, blowing sunshine up your skirt. (laughs) I'm talking about catching those you love doing something good and telling them so. I'm talking about reminding the people you love of who they are deep down inside when life has worn them down and and perhaps they've forgotten. Edification and encouragement, they're often erroneously used synonymously, but as usual, I'm here to tell you it's all so much better than we were led to believe. It's listener question time on Live Life Loved Podcast with Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Let's see what we have today. Okay, this week's question comes from Sherry in Minnesota. She asks, how can I get my husband to stop belittling me and putting me down? Sometimes my husband likes to put me down in the name of differing opinions. Uh, When I tell him that I feel he's putting me down and belittling me, he always has an excuse for it. I know that opinions can differ, but I really feel like it's not about us having different opinions, but I feel like he likes to oppose me, belittle me, and put me down for no good reason. Either he truly doesn't see it, or he's too proud to admit his faults. However, it really wears me down and I need a solution for it. Other than that, we get along just fine and love each other. How do you think I should handle this? Well, Sherry, thank you for writing in. And this really does sound like something that needs to be addressed. And I'll just start here. There's nothing about putting others down that's acceptable. See, the tragedy is that if you're told enough times that you're not good enough, sooner or later, you'll start to believe it, especially if the someone who's telling you you're not good enough is someone you care about or love. I've worked with people who've been at the receiving end of this behavior, and every week I hear from someone new who's right there living it. It breaks my heart every time. It makes people shrink into themselves and limits life, and there's no reason for it to happen. I've compiled some ideas for how to change things if you've been receiving hurtful put-downs, but at this point I feel duty-bound to say something. I'm not commenting on the deep issue of emotional or domestic abuse. And while the line I'm drawing is a gray one, I'm making a distinction between emotional abuse and consistent verbal put-down behavior. That ongoing state of power put in place by someone in a relationship for the purposes of control, self-validation, or transference. The U.S. Department of Justice has defined emotional abuse as, quote, causing fear by intimidation, threatening physical harm to self, partner, children, or partner's family or friends, destruction of pets and property, forcing isolation from family, friends, or school or work. So if that is going on, in addition to the put-down behavior, I highly recommend you get in touch with a marriage counselor a family therapist, someone who can help you navigate through that particular issue in a more personal and constructive way. Okay, with that said, here we go. All right, so number one, own your stuff. People sometimes say silly things. I know I do. And taking everything personally is going to turn you into an anxious, paranoid wreck. Too many people take too many things way too personally. The person saying the thing in the first place could be more sensitive, sure, but the cadence of perception is all yours. There's a line between being able to brush off potentially damaging comments and not tolerating someone who puts you down, and that line is one that you own. Your brain normally takes the workload of perception off of you, automatically taking the situation you're in and creating a world of thought and resulting feelings based on what it pulls together from past experience, memory, and its deep desire to be safe. So the first step in creating change is to become aware of the thoughts you have in these specific situations before, during, and after the put down behavior. Do you think, oh no, I hate this, I need to not say or do anything? 
Do you think if I just get through the next few minutes, it'll be all okay again? Or do you think I deserve this and I'm not good enough? Feelings emerge from thinking. So if you have thoughts about not being good enough, you're going to feel pretty crappy. If you have thoughts about needing to stay still or be quiet, you'll feel small and powerless. If you have thoughts about deserving what's being given to you, you'll feel like you're not okay in a world that is okay. Nobody else is responsible for the thoughts you have, and your thoughts form your experience. Challenge your response to the put-down behavior. Write down a thought diary if it helps you get clarity on the thinking that happens. Be rampantly curious about the thoughts you have and the resulting feelings. Then look for the opportunity to think about it differently and be ready to choose a better thought. A thought that doesn't cast you as a victim, but honors who you are and sees you standing tall. Second option, understand it's not about you. The reasons that someone decides to put you down are many, but often boil down to these few things. Status. One of the things our brain loves is to feel important and to have status. It creates behavior that it believes will enhance that status. And even if it needs to compromise or short circuit a belief about what's right or appropriate, the brain will create thinking that supports a casual link between put down behavior and enhancing status. And once that's in place, it'll use what it knows to achieve status by reducing someone else's. Another name for that is called leveling. Pain is another one. Unaccepted or unacknowledged pain is the foundation for anger and bitterness. With pain as a foundation, that anger and bitterness leaks out as behavior, regardless of the impact or intention. Another reason someone would use put down behavior is control. Being in control of the environment has a substantial impact on the level of stress we feel. If you believe that you're in control of your environment, even if that means keeping someone else, quote, in their place, you'll feel much more certain about what will happen. And that sense of autonomy and certainty fuels the release of the brain's feel-good chemicals. All of this, and you have to fully acknowledge this, is about them, not you. If you find yourself on the receiving end, think this is not about me and recognize that the stuff in their head is theirs alone and you're not responsible for any of it, nor are you responsible for fixing it. Okay, option number three, how to deal with this is to teach them. Well, this phrase has made it into our popular culture, thanks to Dr. Phil. And he says, you teach people how to treat you. Wonderfully simple and extraordinarily true. See, if your response to their behavior is to smooth things over, take it, ignore it, or accept it, you're teaching them that their behavior is acceptable and they'll keep on keeping on. People are dumb like that. They'll do what works until they have a strong evidence that it doesn't work. And that's evidence that only you can create, Sherry. I get it that it's hard, but you need to start letting him know through your responses that you expect something different and something better from him. It's your job to let him know that you expect to be treated with respect. It sounds super scary, right? But if this is where you are, I think you understand that you need to start somewhere, even if it's scary. Remember that teaching him how to treat you doesn't have to be a big dramatic event. It doesn't mean that you're rocking the boat, and it doesn't mean that things will get worse. Watch out for the thoughts you'll have that make it easy to not start teaching him how to treat you. Then start as simply as you can. Break the patterns that lead to put down behavior. Hold up your hand to interrupt them. Ask him for respect and consideration. State the fact that you're not willing to put up with the way things have been. Let him know you love him, but you expect to be treated differently. Now, number four, get support. When a light is shown on what's been happening, putting a stop to put down behavior can happen pretty quickly. But sometimes it can take a while to shift thinking and behavior that's been well rehearsed on both sides. Sometimes change is a long game. You deserve to be treated with love and respect, and you have to be consistent in both the creation of thinking to support that belief and in changing your behavior in ways that honor it. The important thing to remember is that you don't have to do this alone. 
You're allowed to find support to help you be consistent. You're allowed to have a shoulder to cry on when it's hard. And you're allowed to find help in doing what you know is the best thing to do. Doesn't matter if it's from a best friend, a family member, a support group, or a professional. It's being supported that matters. If it gets hard, don't give in. If you get tired, don't give up. Feeling supported makes a world of difference. Okay, now then, number five. The last option for how to deal with this. Get out. When you've done what you can and he's still putting you down, you need to consider two questions. How else can I turn this around? And what am I prepared to do to turn things around? If having considered those questions, you're coming up blank, then there's really only one choice left. Get the hell out. You can't reach into their head and change their thoughts and behavior. And it will always remain unacceptable to be on the receiving end of put down behavior. No matter how your brain might try to trick you into thinking, it's okay. People either get how things need to work or they don't. And there's no way you should suffer at the hands of someone who just doesn't get it. If at the end, you've done what you can and they're still putting you down, truly, you owe it to yourself to get out and get something better. Sherry, I know that's a lot to digest and probably sounds like some pretty radical options. You're deeply loved, Sherry, by the creator of the universe. And were this a perfect world, edification and building one another up would be the absolute norm between humans. But in this world, perfection is an illusion. We can, however, educate ourselves, raise the bar, and establish healthy expectations and behavioral boundaries that are a positive force in our lives. As always, if you feel like you could use some more personal and directed coaching through this issue, we can definitely get that set up. Visit NicoleBerryHill.com and click on the services link. Well, that's it for this week. Tune in next Tuesday when we continue the series on how to love and we dig into the idea that passion for anyone or anything is absolutely nothing without dedication. So until then, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to the Live Life Loved podcast with Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share over your social media to help spread the love. Be sure to sign up for the free Live Life Loved newsletter today at NicoleBerryHill.com for bonus weekly content to help you live your life loved.